Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silek and I'm out here on Black Lake for Michigan's shortest fishing season, that's sturgeon spearing season. We'll show you what happened out here on the ice this year for the season. And Jimmy and Jordan also have some adventures in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We are pretty excited for that sturgeon story from the northeast part of the lower peninsula. After that, we're going to head down to the southwest part of the lower to do a little steelhead fishing. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies, it's Michigan. Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988, offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By RBM Jigs, a Michigan-based company serving ice fishing anglers around the state and throughout the country. Specializing in ice fishing gear, RBM Jigs manufactures tungsten jigs, soft plastics, and much more. Online at lakeeffectlures.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan-based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information about the 2022 models, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. There was a special excitement in the air last Friday afternoon here on Black Lake near Onaway. Michigan's annual sturgeon spearing season would kick off the next morning at 8 a.m. and folks were cutting holes and setting shanties in hopes of harvesting one of the six fish allocated for this season. Last year and now this year, there would be no shivery celebration on the it's ice. It's quite a bit different. I mean, you know, we have a lot more uh, activity out here on the lake. People are driving a little bit this year and uh, a lot more portable shanties. People come up because our season's so short uh, without the shivery. Um, well, it kind of really tones things down quite a bit, uh, but we're going to bring it back next year. Basically, our, our program um, is kind of like everything we had in our um, planning part of it was we pretty much accomplished. We made this, uh, you know, sustaining population now. It's growing. Our biggest thing is the sturgeon garden of spring to prevent the poaching because that's where most of our sturgeon loss was through traditional, you know, through the years. The education, the sturgeon in the classroom, that's another big program to keep people involved, get new people involved, um, get our word out there that, you know, this is what it's all about, trying to get the young people involved to help rehabilitate sturgeon and, and many other things too. So. The Sturgeon for Tomorrow group here at Black Lake has made an incredible impact on improving the sturgeon population and creating awareness here. After a relaxing night at the local UAW retreat center, we were back on the ice on Saturday morning for the big day. Anglers were doing all their last minute prepping and some were running back to shore for a forgotten item. It was time to fire up the heat in the shacks, clear ice out of holes, set up spears at the ready, and make sure everything is in perfect order for the 8 a.m. countdown. Traditionally, sturgeon season here on Black Lake lasts minutes, not hours. And with the great visibility in the water this year, anglers were expecting yet another quick season. Over the years, we've seen all kinds of crazy tactics and decoys used to catch the attention of those slow-moving giants swimming in the lake. From cheese graters and trash can lids to pom-poms and light-up toilet seats, anglers have tried it all. But it seems like a lot of people have turned back to the classic red and white fish decoy lately. 
One of the most comfortable shanties I've seen is Andy Archambault's wind-powered shack. My wind generator actually makes the power for everything in here. I got a, a TV that I put up in Wisconsin and stuff. We fish with cameras. Yeah. So that makes all my electricity for everything. And just lights and... That's awesome. This is quite something in here. Yeah, pretty cozy. Yeah. Carpet. Man, you even got a little area to take off your boots. Yeah, I usually lay on the floor and fish. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a ceiling fan up in the corner that blows the heat down. Oh, nice. Okay, so, all right. Good luck. All Let right. me know if you get one. Have a good day. Thanks. All right, you too. Well, it's 7.35 on Saturday morning. Everybody's in their shacks, poised and ready. This is when all the sturgeon spearers, they're kind of focused, getting ready, and then once the season starts at 8 o'clock, I learned the hard way one year. I tried to peek open and open somebody's door and peek in to see how things were going, and that's a huge no-no because <laughs> you just let a bunch of light in, and then they can't see down the hole. So. I'm just going to hang out, out here in the middle of this cluster of shanties. We're kind of in the northeast corner of the lake. And um, it's kind of different this year. There's no DNR trailer to check in with your fish on shore. So you got to drive down the road uh, to the DNR office. So I'll hang out here for a little bit and then I'll probably head over to the office and see what fish are being brought in. We're allowed to spear seven this year as a state and I think they're shutting it down after the sixth fish is speared just because there's sometimes simultaneous spearing going on as they're wrapping up so pretty exciting feels good to be back once the season began it was pretty lonely out on the ice but I found a DNR staff member to chat with as we waited Alexa Curtis I'm a fisheries uh, technician I have a fish on the ice by the state park Oh. There we go. First fish just came in on Black Lake for, experience for the our spearing season. Name is Ash. <laughs> no way! And it's 10 after. Yep, just 10 Ash? after. Season oh, cool. just opened about 10 minutes ago. Nice. Oh. That's correct. <laughs> It'll be tag number 226. Oh, exciting! Awesome. <laughs> That's funny how it works out. Yep. Just doing an update. Just saying what? there wasn't a fish yet, and there we go. Just like that, we've got our first fish of the season. <laughs> and we're after. Oh, that might be. Hey, where, who is this, and where at? We've got our second fish. Oh my goodness! Just oh, like that, back to back. All right, we think we're pretty close to. Uh, the second fish that was speared, one of the fish that was just speared in the first 10 minutes is 62 inches long. We do see a small crowd gathering a few hundred yards away, so we're going to go check it out. See if we can see our, one of our first fish of the day. We caught up with one of the successful anglers just before he left the lake. Matt Barber from Sheboygan. Okay, cool. Do um, we do the first or the second? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea. I come in right on the ice. I didn't even let go of the spear handle. All I saw was his tail. I only saw right where I speared him, right there. His tail went underneath my hole. I speared him and pulled him out of the water. So he's right up at the top? Right, right on the ice. It was oh crazy. My. What time did you get him? I don't know. <laughs> 8.15 <laughs> maybe. It was close. I have no idea. Sat down right after, just after 8. 8.10. Is this your first surgeon? Yep. Awesome. Been fishing a long time. Been fishing here my whole life on Black Lake. But, really? Yep. Oh, very cool. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, I think we're going to head to the field office because the fourth sturgeon was just speared at 827. It's 829 right now. Um, we got to get over to the field office and check out some more of these fish. The season just ended while we were on our way over to the field office. There are six fish on the ice. It was 835. This has got to be one of the fastest seasons on record yet. 35 minutes and it's all over. All that work, all the prep, all the excitement, and it's over. 35 minutes. So much fun. At the check station, we learned that Matt Barber speared the second fish of the day. It weighed 67 pounds, it was 62 inches long, and according to the DNR, it had quite the history. So this, this is a male sturgeon, um, the second fish of the day taken by this angler Matt back here. That it's a big male, um, and we've tagged this fish through our research 
between Michigan State and Central Michigan in the past. We tag this fish every other year in the spawning run since 2002. Really? So 2002, she, he came in the spawning run in four, six, eight, all the way through 2020. Wow, every other year. Yep, but he's not going to make it this year. <laughs> but it, what, it, what it does is it shows you the spawning periodicity. Males don't spawn every year in the spawning run, and females certainly don't spawn. They spawn even less. Sometimes the females only come up every four or five years wow. to spawn because it takes them a long time to get that, that, that egg mass. So, but this is a big boy, big boy male that, so, that this angler is going to mount now. How old do you estimate this one to be? It's really hard to do. Um, probably 40, 50 years old. Wow. Maybe. Cool. Yeah, we used to age the sturgeon through the spine, taking a cross section of a dorsal or a, ray, you know, a pectoral ray, but there's so much air involved in it that it's it's kind of a guessing game. So okay. um, anyway, it's a nice fish. Yeah. Congratulations. Scott Ash speared the very first fish this morning, measuring 59.5 inches long. Scott is a veteran at sturgeon spearing. Yep, yep, you interviewed me in 2014. I got one that year. Okay, what'd you get then? Uh, 70 pounder, 66 inches. Wow, and what'd they say this one was? Uh, it's 48 pounds, and I don't know how long. They didn't tell me how long it was. Okay, pretty decent. I mean, it's as long as the tailgate. Right, however long a tailgate is, it's that long. <laughs> so how did it happen? Well, I just looked down, I was answering a text like we always do, and I looked down, and she was nose right up to the decoy. Really? So maybe about eight feet down. Wow, that's yeah. got to get your heart going. It does, it gets you pumped up. Is this your second sturgeon? This is my third one out of Black Lake. Third yeah, one? I got one in 2017 also. Oh, wow. With the season closed, the rest of the successful anglers were bringing their fish into the check station, and I don't think any of them were quite as excited as the youngest fisherman to harvest a sturgeon. Young Andrew Maltby's fish was 56 inches long and 35 pounds. It all on his own. Oh my goodness! What's your name? Andrew. Andrew what? Mulpy. How old are you? Eleven. Eleven? This has got to be your first sturgeon. How'd it go? How'd Good. you do it? Good. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> you gotta face this way. How did it happen? Tell me what happened. Um, it came from the deep end, um, where, like, right under the decoy. And? Just swimming in and then I threw the spear And you in. knew you had to get it? Uh-huh. How'd it feel? Good. Awesome. Good job. 11 years old. Sweet. Wow, yeah. Is this your first season? No. no. we fished last year. Did you? Yeah. Where are you guys from? We're from Sheboygan. Sheboygan? I've, I've fished out here lots of years. I've never speared one. <laughs> I've speared a couple in Wisconsin, but not here. The next angler to register his sturgeon was Doug Blaskowski, who had his son Liam with him when he speared this 45-pound, 57-inch fish. We were sitting there and dropped the decoy at 8 o'clock. At 8.02, he was ready to go home. So I talked him into staying, and 25 minutes later, come right in, center of the hole, right to the decoy, and we got him. Wow, what'd you use for a decoy? Just a red and white decoy. Yeah, it seems yep. to be the tried and true one, eh? Yep. Good job, guys. Thank you. Next in was Jerry Perrin from the Augre area with his first sturgeon. Jerry had a little excitement in the shack this morning. He actually come in and I missed him and pulled the spear back up and he turned and come right through the center of the hole. Really? Yep. So how did it happen with your fish? Uh, just spun the decoy and I come in right up to it. Wow. Uh, is this your first? Perfect shot. No, this is my third one off of black. Really? Yeah. So I you know what you were doing out there. Yeah, yeah. The first year of the lottery system, I got one of the fish back in 99. Nice. So that was pretty cool. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So you guys eat these? Yes. Okay. Excellent eating. Awesome. Do you Love smoke it. the meat or just? No, no. We just uh, deep fry it. Oh, wow. Yeah, everybody okay. does a little bit differently. So. Nice. Very cool. Kind of like skinning a catfish, maybe? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Yep. And then we chunk it up in steaks and deep fry it. Nice. Yeah, it's excellent for us. So awesome. We'll be congrats. eating tonight. Yeah, congrats. Thank you very much. Oh, this is just such a delight to be here and see all of these great fish coming in and these wonderful stories that are associated with them. It's such an iconic hunt, and it's so good, you know, for the restoration of this, you know, prehistoric species and has such a great impact, um, not not only on its evolution and its biology here, but also the economic impact that, that this, you know, this 
36 minute long uh, fishing season has on this community historically over the years on, on the small community here of Onaway and on you know Indian River and the Sheboygan area. I mean it's, it's a really really big deal and it's such a tradition for so many people here and it's just it's so fun to actually finally get here to see you know the harvest come in and, and, and see the joy on the folks faces. The annual sturgeon spearing season on Black Lake is always memorable. Congrats to all who participated. A special reminder to all who spear through the ice anywhere in our great state. When you move your shanty, please mark your spearing holes with something biodegradable and easy to see. It's the best way to keep everyone safe here in Michigan's Out of Doors. For our next segment on this week's show, we're going to switch gears and hit the open water way down in the southwest corner of the state where I was able to tag along with a couple of anglers fishing for steelhead. For this week's show, I would be tagging along with a young couple on the St. Joe River. These two fish the river often, and we were hoping for the best as we made our way out on this beautiful February morning. We're on the St. Joe River, Bering Springs, Michigan. Uh, gonna be float fishing for steelhead, uh, running center pins, bait casters, fishing spawn and beads. Just covering water, name of the game this time of the year to put a lot of fish in the boat. So it's been pretty tough. The past couple weeks has been pretty, pretty low temps, single digits, made it tough to get out. Got out a couple days ago, did really good, so figured it was worth a try again today. Well, a lot of people when they think the St. Joe River, they don't immediately think steelhead fishing. They might think catfish. Catfish is a big time. Uh, walleye, they put a lot of walleye in here. But the wintertime steelheading can be just as good as some of your other bigger rivers on the west side, like the Muskegon, the Manistee, the Grand. And uh, it's kind of just one of those drive past rivers. You just drive over it and you don't realize what's there. And you got, there's so many inland lakes around here too that you got, everybody switches to ice fishing and all them other winter time activities and they kind of just forget that the river doesn't freeze solid and you can fish it. Today we were fishing mostly with spawn and as we were waiting for that first bite, I had Kyle walk me through what his setup looks like. I go cheap with the main line because I change it a lot. You know, center from fishing, the line gets twisted up pretty quick depending on how you cast and sliding your floats, everything. You just go through a lot of line quickly. So I keep it cheap, but I keep it heavy too, so I don't lose a lot of bobbers. I most, mostly fish 14 pounds, 17 pound Trilene XT, and I normally just run clear. And for leader, these midwinter months, I fish eight, 10 pound test fluorocarbon, but fall, spring, dirty water, I'll run 12. And that way you can really put the, you can put the wood to the fish when you're running 12 pound leader. In the spring and fall when the fish are pretty hot, the warmer water, it definitely helps get more fish in the boat. I like to fish a heavier bobber so they take more weight and I run, I run a bulk shot which is all of my shot right by my swivel. And depending on where I'm at, sometimes I'll take them and slide them apart up here and what I'm fishing. But for the most part, a lot of the runs we fish are pretty short so I like to get down quick and the bulk shot gets you down quick, gets your bait right to bottom. There it is. There you go. Ooh, <laughs> jumper. Oh, she's pretty. We're getting them. 
I'm just not keeping them. <laughs> so we're gonna try again and try again. And hopefully we'll end up with one in the boat. We've got this one that we saw. Now we just gotta get them in the boat. <laughs> so I grew up in Manistee, which is what I like to call sportsman's paradise. You've got just about anything to fish for. Um, steelhead, king salmon, panfish, perch. Um, you know, I grew up doing a lot of small fishing with my dad. Uh, and then as I got older, a lot of my friends had boats and we'd go out fishing for kings. Uh, a lot, spent a lot of time on the dock in the summer. Um, just going out and having fun and catching fish. And when Kyle and I started talking and he would bring me down to this area. We'd do a little bit of steelhead fishing, which was new for me. Um, most of the time we were lake fishing. So river fishing has been um, definitely a learning game. But yeah, it's just been really awesome to not only just get out on the water and spend time with friends, but to do something that challenges you every day. Even on the days where it's slow or you don't catch fish, it's all a learning experience. You know, you pick something up each time you go out and a memory made so well we definitely found some fish but getting them to the boat is uh being a problem today that is the fifth fish we've hooked and lost in the past hour so definitely uh looking forward to putting one in the boat <laughs> after a somewhat rough start to the morning we decided to move downstream and try a different spot and before long we had hooked another steelhead <laughs> that one's hard earned. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You can just bring him in. Finally got one in the boat. <laughs> this one's clipped too, so hatchery fish. The average size is uh, definitely been a lot smaller. We normally normally are fi fishing and getting that six to eight pound range fish. This year it's been a lot of threes and fours with a, once in a while you get a big fish, but years past it's definitely been big fish years. So I don't know what's up with that. If it's just all across the west side, if the fish size is down or just our river it seems, but definitely a lot of smaller fish. <laughs> day is not my day. <laughs> After fishing for a while downstream, we decided to head back upriver near the dam, where we had hooked a few fish earlier in the day, and also not far from where Kyle caught his very first steelhead. I started steelhead fishing when I was uh, probably five, six years old. I caught my first steelhead right down the river with my dad holding on to the back of me, and after that, kind of just forgot about it temporarily, and then once I got you know, driver's license, all that. I kind of picked it back up and probably seven, eight years ago, got pretty serious about it. Started getting all the right equipment, reading into it, watching the videos, and probably for the past five years, 90% of my fishing is steelhead fishing. We decided to make a big run back up from where we were fishing to where we hooked them all this morning. And didn't take very long, and we hooked another one. A lot better fish, pretty fresh, hasn't been in very long, super shiny. Had to work for them today. Definitely, <laughs> definitely had to work for them. Hardest I've had to work to put fish in the net in a long time. Although we didn't land a ton of fish, it was still a fun day on the water in a part of the state we don't get to very often. Special thanks to Kyle and Katie for letting me tag along on a fun day here in Southwest Michigan.
Well, hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. If you missed part of this week's show or maybe last week's show, you can always check us out online. We have full episodes of the show on our website every week. We're also on most of the social media sites as well as YouTube. You can subscribe to our channel there and get an email every time we post something new. And there will be a lot of new stuff coming over the next several weeks. And if we don't see it in the woods or on the water, hopefully you'll see it right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoor Rama, February 24th through 27th at Novi's Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, the trout pound, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoor Rama in Novi. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck. Deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe. St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I